Hey guys, really, really excited to be here. Um, so I thought today I'd take a slightly different approach. A lot of the time we talk about you know, our learnings when we're going through struggles or after we started a company. But today I want to kind of share a little bit more about um, the aha moment of when we started BioRender. So I've, uh, I've titled this Discovering an Industry Stuck in the Middle Ages. And so I want everyone to, to join with me on this. And right now I want you to imagine you have a really, really good idea. Um, you want to share that idea with the entire world and you're in the Middle Ages. What do you do? So you get really excited and you tell somebody about your idea so they can write it down for you because you are illiterate and you don't know how to do it yourself. That sucks. The good news in history is that after the Middle Ages, we had the Renaissance, which was full of, full of all sorts of amazing scientific innovations. And, and I'm, a, I'm a chemist scientist by, by training, and so I've always found science to be really fun and fascinating, and especially an incredibly visual language. And so I want you to play a little game with me right now and kind of validate that thought. So it's a pop quiz. Um, so here's the quiz. We're going to start off. Can you tell me what field of science this is? Boom, very good. OK, here's the one a little bit harder. What field is this one? I've heard a few circuits, electrical engineering, physics. You guys are on fire. And now the hardest one, what field is this? Hey, that's amazing. So it took me a little while to realize that this is actually biology. Um, and the craziest thing is these three images I picked, I picked them for a specific reason. They all have something um, really unique in common. You probably don't know what it is, it's not obvious. But they are all pulled from the lecture a Nobel Prize winner gave after receiving the Nobel Prize. And so if you're like I was, you're probably wondering what the hell is up with biology visuals? And so about two years ago, I decided to try to figure that out. And so my co-founder and I, we spent you know, about a year going through all the different science visuals people make around the world. We accumulated thousands of them, and I'm giving you a 12-figure snapshot right here. And it's pretty clear that these figures that biologists make are not great. Um, you know, that, there's one of them in the middle there that looks like a three-year-old drew it. Um, most of them look like they've had circles, squares, blobs, spiky things thrown together in an effort to communicate. This is all published research. Really, really fascinating work. And what's worse than the quality of them, that they wouldn't even win a grade five art contest, is that they're actually all trying to communicate the same thing. And for me, that was an incredible moment of realizing that the state of biology is in a terrible spot if we're trying to grow at exponential rates. But then I also started wondering, well, wait a minute. We've seen beautiful biology pictures before. I went to bio courses in high school, and there was gorgeous skulls. Or I've seen pharmaceutical companies share incredible images about how drugs work. Who makes those images? And so when I started, you know, luckily for me, I knew someone about it. But I started realizing these are, this is made by people who are professional scientific or medical illustrators, an incredibly rare breed of human who's both a genius on the artistic side and on the scientific one. So if we're looking at history, we could probably think back to the Renaissance days of the most famous one, Leonardo da Vinci. He would you know, famously pull up corpses and make you know, crazy images about them. But we also have others, and this is my co-founder, Shiz. She's a world-famous scientific illustrator as well. And she spent 15 years learning how to create incredible surgical illustrations like this one or internal cellular or organ um, uh, images like that one. And the issue is, is that these people are really rare. So there's 30 trained science illustrators every year, I found out. And that's to service 8 million life scientists. So now I want to play this game again. Imagine you're a life scientist, and you've got a really big idea, and you want to share that idea with the entire world. What do you do? Well, you do the research, and then you go and sit down with a science illustrator who has to draw out your idea for you because you don't know how to. And that's how I realized that life science right now is stuck in the Middle Ages. And so what happens when you find an industry stuck in the Middle Ages? Well, if you've done what I have and have built companies in the past, or if you're trying to do it for the first time, we've heard it before tonight. And the first thing you got to do is you've got to put together an amazing team. And so what we did is we assembled a team of the best science illustrators on Earth, and we started thinking about how to standardize biology. We then added on some incredible developers and a team of people who like to help solve really hard problems. 
And from that, we've actually now created a 30,000 image standard library or standard language for life science, which scientists around the world are using to communicate all sorts of different life science fields today. And it's really, really, really exciting to me because not only do we get to contribute to potentially you know, the renaissance of the biology, which has started about five or 10 years ago, but we also get to try to impact and change headlines like this, where one in three people in France don't believe vaccines are actually safe, or only 27% of Republicans believe scientists speak the truth. And what's the results of that? Well, measles have been going up. You know, they were eradicated in the Americas five years ago, not anymore. No longer in Europe. In 2008, this was a state of world health around the world for a disease outbreak. Only four years later, after major anti-vaccine campaigns, we're seeing that changing and that completely. And so for us, this sort of brings like a mission statement about how can we possibly help the world become more science literate? And that's what we're doing today at BioRender. Anyway, so that's our mission. Um, we're hiring, of course. So I ought to add that in all the time. Uh, quick note about us, we're sort of about two years old. We're a venture back company in Toronto. Uh, we've got a team of 20, and here we are. Thank you so much. Questions? I'll, I'll, it's Alex here. I'll start with the first one. How did, how did you find this space? How did, how did you come across it? So, so Shiz is in the audience too. She was on the thing. She's, uh, she's my co-founder. She's a world famous science illustrator. We went to Queens together. Um, so I learned about it from her. And then there was a point where we were sort of going through and she was trying to expand her science illustration studio. She's an entrepreneur as well. And um, as a chemist, I'd use this kind of like mediocre tool called ChemDraw when I was studying chemistry and kind of assumed there must be something similar for biology. Um, so when we started looking into it and realizing, you know, not only are there so few people who can communicate it and scientists make these ugly pictures, but there's no actual standard language for, for biology. And that was sort of the, the big aha moment for us. And so the, the first step was, you know, would people want a standard language? And luckily for us, you know, one thing we learned as I've learned as an entrepreneur before is when you have a really good idea, go to the source, go to the, the most trusted resource in that space and see if they buy into it. And so we went to the three biggest journals in the world, Cell, Nature, and Science. Um, and we pitched editors there to see, hey, would you want a standard biological language that you'd want to put in your journals? And we, we hoped for a mediocre response, and a couple of them gave us incredible responses. That's sort of when we first knew we were really on something. Mm -hmm. the, question. The, the question was, how do we market? Um, so this is another thing I've learned a lot in BioRender versus my last, pro my last companies, where we were very consumer focused. So BioRender, we are like a 100% product focused company. So if anyone who's building something they think is similar to this, where you actually are disrupting like a dark age technology, um, my advice is just focus solely on the product. And so we really iterated the product until we felt we had like an unbelievable user response. We track NPS really closely. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's the net promoter score. Um, so we weren't satisfied until we hit a net promoter score of 70, which is considered world class. And then we, we do a lot of social media engagement. Um, we interact, like many people have said, with our customers on a regular basis. So we spend like way too much time talking to our customers and engaging them. And so they market the product for us. So if you, um, like Slack's a great role model for us. We have a Twitter wall of love similar to them um, where people just share how they use our tool a lot. And uh, then now we do enterprise sales through universities and large pharma companies and everything else too. Um, I have a background in science and now I'm in tech. So when you were show showcasing all of those diagrams, it really brought me back. I wanted to know what exactly is your vision in the future for this particular product? So our, our vision is that the world becomes science literate. That's, that's like we want people to become science literate through the use of visual communication, um, which we think is the easiest way to do it. So that's the big one. One last question. Hi. Uh, so I, I was really influenced with this idea. So what I was asking is, you have a whole set of customers that you you can actually target. Do you have any specific set of customers? Because I see from education till uh, to, to different health organizations would be your target set of customers. Do you have any specific set of customers in mind that you target? So I just want to make sure. So the question was, do we have a specific set of customers that we're targeting right now? Correct. 
Um, yeah, we do, we do. So we target any life science researcher. We break them into three categories. We have academic life science researchers or nonprofit uh, life science researchers. Then we have pharma or biotech life science researchers. And we have uh, life science journals or publications. And those are the kind of three areas we go after. And we kind of target them each separately, if that helps. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, guys.